If there's one thing the Lego Ninjago TV series absolutely loves doing, it's killing off its characters. However, there's another thing that Ninjago loves to do almost as much as killing the characters, and that's bringing them back to life. I believe that the original 10 seasons of Ninjago produced by Will Film handle character revival so, so well. And that's not to make a Will Film good, Wild Brain bad argument, because I think Wild Brain has a ton of incredible seasons under their belt, such as 11, 13, and 14. There's just areas that one studio is able to do better than the other, and this applies to both studios. And in this case, we're discussing bringing characters back from the dead. Let's begin. What I love about Will Film Ninjago is that not only all of the character deaths are usually incredibly impactful and really bookend a character well, but if that character ends up being brought back, nine times out of ten, there will be a reason. Like, if they're taking away the impact of the character death itself, the story writers will usually replace it with something that's just as good, if not better. Let's take Zayn as an example. His death scene in season 3 might be one of the most iconic scenes of the entire Ninjago series. Having Zayn fully cement his humanity to the viewer by sacrificing his very existence for his friends would be an incredible way to end the character. But Lego being Lego did not allow them to permanently kill off Zayn. So, seeing as Zayn is a robot, he rebuilt himself in a new body. And when he eventually remembers this, it absolutely shatters him. Zayn has spent the past three seasons proving to the viewer he's a human, but if he's a rebuilt Zayn, how much of that Zayn is really left? Is what he is now artificial? Is he still the same person he was when he died? Throughout the season, he slowly becomes more and more comfortable with his body until he has the ultimate existential crisis moment when he looks inward and realizes that he has changed. But he accepts that. He isn't the white ninja anymore. He's the titanium ninja. And even in a different body, he's still just as human as he was before. Undoing the death in season 3 was able to reinforce all of the themes that were established by the past 3 seasons of Zane stories and deliver the best story for the character we've ever seen, even to this day. 8 whole years later. Another example I can think of is Pyfor. He spends the entirety of season 1 obsessed with releasing the Great Devourer and getting revenge on the humans. But the very first thing the Great Devourer does when it's unleashed is eat Pyfor because the Great Devourer does not discriminate. It consumes all life. It's an ironic ending because Pyfor's end goal was the thing that ultimately causes undoing. But Pyfor's too cool to keep dead. In season 3, it's revealed that yes, while his body was permanently scarred by the insides of the Great Devourer, he did survive the ordeal. And honestly, this twist makes plenty of sense in hindsight, given that same episode revealed that Wu survived the same thing just fine, so why can't he? The one thing I will grant here is that Pi 4's arc does take a while to get set up. He is entertaining in season 3, and it's not like anything in this season actively ruins what we see in season 1, but he is a pretty static character here. This is where, once again, season 4 comes in. Man, this season was amazing for character work. You see, Pi 4 is an anachondri, the tribe of Serpentine that went completely extinct after they were locked in the tombs. Don't ask how they all died. Pi 4 is the last of his race, and in comes Master Chen. This guy was the one who instigated the conflict between humans and Serpentine, and is the direct reason all of the snakes were imprisoned for so long, and is now going around turning his followers into fake versions of his dead allies. This absolutely infuriates Pi 4 and shows us a sense of honor from him that we've never seen in the show before. He's definitely not some good guy or valiant hero, but there's no way he's gonna sit around and let this charlatan of all people take over. And so, Pi 4 becomes pivotal in helping the ninja win, and finally, for once in his life makes his ancestors proud. Over the course of Ninjago Season 5, the character of Moro contends with his ego. He has this desperate need to prove himself to Master Wu and the people around him that he is important, leading him to get cursed, come back as a ghost, and do some pretty bad things. However, in his dying moments, Wu is finally able to open up to him and say that he never needed to prove himself at all, and that everyone needs to rely on each other for strength. This leads him to letting go of his pride and allowing the preeminent to take him to the Departed Realm. In comes Day of the Departed, when for one night only, him and a bunch of other villains are brought back from the dead and are given one simple task. If you can kill one of the ninja before the yin-yang eclipse ends, you can take their place amongst the living. Everyone here, including Pyfor for some reason who doesn't even need to kill one of them to survive, is super on board with this plan and merrily hops off to kill one of the ninja. Except for Moro, who uses this opportunity to go and fully reconcile with his master. Rather than fighting him and trying to claim his place in the living world, Moro warns Wu as to what's going on, and because of him, they're able to save Cole. Moro had a chance to come back to the living world, and instead decided to sacrifice his second chance at life in order to make amends with the people he's wronged. With the final ending of his story being that he goes back to the departed realm willingly and peacefully, knowing that he's made up for his sins. The final character we have to talk about today is the man himself, Lord Garmadon. 
At the end of Season 4, Garmadon sacrifices himself and goes to the Cursed Realm in order to release the Anachondroid Generals who will curse Chen and his army. However, in Season 5 when the Cursed Realm is brought into Ninjago, Lloyd is trapped in it for a while and gets to have a final conversation with his father. After this, the Cursed Realm is destroyed, taking the souls of Garmadon, Moro and the other ghosts up to the Departed Realm. Lloyd and his father left off their relationship on a good note, a bittersweet ending, and Lloyd is gonna grow as a result of this. Although he deeply, deeply misses his father, which is very apparent in the seasons that follow. And then in comes Princess Harumi, who resurrects Garmadon from the Departed Realm, bringing him back into the living world. On paper, this plotline should be absolutely awful. This plotline should fly in the face of everything we've seen from Garmadon in the first five seasons, and leave nothing of impact left. However, by some miracle of nature and incredible character writing, the Ninjago writers managed to produce the exact opposite result. The resurrection of Lord Garmadon is one of, if not the best stories the show has ever told. And the reason for that is because it builds off everything we mentioned leading up to this. The reintroduction of Lord Garmadon, and specifically his evil persona into the Ninjago storyline, only highlights the impact of the absence of Garmadon on Lloyd's life. Garmadon is resurrected, but under the stipulation that he's not the man you recognize. Rather than a flawed man with a ton of sympathy to offer even if he's made some bad choices in his life, Garmadon is a merciless killing machine, with no empathy or any kind of regard for any other human being. If you can even call him a human being at this point. You wouldn't hurt me. Your son. I have no son. Even beyond that, the Ninjago writers take it one step further than just using the resurrection of a character to highlight how painful his absence is. They give this new resurrected Oni Garmadon one of the most powerful arcs in this entire show. Throughout the end of season 8 and the ninth season of the show, Garmadon slowly transforms from being a mindless killing machine to becoming more and more of a person, and is confronted with the game-changing revelation that he does still have the capacity to care, as he hesitates when he has a perfect opportunity to kill Lloyd. In order to make sure this doesn't get in the way of his goals, Garmadon adopts Harumi so he can have someone to care about beyond Lloyd, who he has to kill. But things go south when Harumi is brutally killed and then Garmadon loses his empire, which leads to March of the Yoni, where he is more human than he was at the end of season 8, but he still has a long way to go, and is almost definitely, at least to some extent, repressing his ability to care. Then, after constantly pushing this survivalist, feelings come last mindset, Lloyd eventually blows up on Garmadon and gives him a massive reality check, which leads into a conversation with Vinny, where Garmadon is fully reminded of what makes life worth living. Then, he's confronted with the idea of Lloyd being killed by the Oni, which makes him realize that this mindless conqueror stuff is insane, and he finally accepts that he does care for other people, and puts his life on the line to save his son along with everyone in the 16 realms. After this, Garmadon and Wu are finally at a position where they feel like they're at peace with each other. And, in a sharp contrast to the original pilots where Garmadon is violently banished from the Monastery of Spinjitsu for his crimes, Garmadon is able to leave the Monastery on his own terms in order to carve out his own path in life. Now, before I get a bunch of inevitable comments about this, I am not talking about that season here. Although the Wild Brain seasons kind of faltered with how they brought back characters, the first 10 seasons of the show, minus when they brought back the Overlord and rebooted for no reason, were pretty incredible at bringing back deceased characters. And I think this is because usually when a character dies in this season and comes back, the writers will replace that death with something just as good, if not better. Leaving most viewers in a position where they're thinking, sure, it would have been nice if this character was allowed to stay dead. But, if that happened, we would have never got this wonderful story. I think this is something that the future Ninjago installments could definitely take some notes from. Because, oh my god, these old seasons did this concept really well. Although, I want to pass the mic on to you guys. Let me know in the comments what your favourite character revival is in all of Ninjago. It can be anything from Moro to Garmadon, to even something I'd absolutely disagree with, like Harumi in the newest season. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.